Everyone remembers the beloved dollar meal, but not everyone knows the plummet in profits that came right after its introduction. In this video, we'll be detailing all the rise and fall of McDonald's dollar menu, detailing every high point and low point that led to its eventual retirement. Stick around until the end of the video to see the McDamage control that face planted just as soon as it got off the ground. Fast food equals fast money. Since the dawn of man, we've all been motivated by one true goal, to get the most out of our money. Hello, I like money. Sales, discounts, coupons, heck, even buy one take one promos are insanely popular in the retail industry. And eventually, the good management heads over at Wendy's got their thinking hats on and realized that if these discounts can sell you more handbags, then it could definitely sell more burgers. Introducing the fast food world's first ever value meal menu. Wendy's Super Value Meal Introduced in 1989, this meal was a big hit. Though the name itself leaves a lot to be desired and doesn't really roll off the tongue well, the items on the menu sure did. Baked potatoes, fries, shakes, and even burgers, all at the low, low cost of 99 cents each. Nowadays, buying a single burger equates to buying two hamburgers in the 90s. Not to sound like a boomer, but those really were the good old days. Wendy's successful promo menu food was like throwing chum into shark-infested waters. Soon enough, other fast food giants would bring out their own poorly named promo menus that focused on customers getting the most out of their money. From Burger King to Taco Bell, value promos were the next big thing in the fast food world. But none of these fast food chains could ever live up to the clown prince of cheeseburgers, McDonald's. McDominance. When it came to introducing value to the customers, McDonald's was the king. In fact, McDonald's was the first ever company to introduce set meals, which included the iconic burger, the fries, and even a sugary shake to wash it all down. This full meal offering not only made McDonald's image as a family establishment fully realized, it also made McDonald's a whole lot more money. The idea of the value meal was simple. Get more customers to buy more of your product while sacrificing just a tiny portion of your profits. This meant that getting product out of the door was easier than ever, which is exactly what you want to be doing when you're dealing with perishables. No customer would want to get served burger patties that are over a week old, and this promo made sure that all of it was getting through the door as fresh as it came into the store. One of of the more controversial value promos that McDonald's put out was the Supersize Upgrade that was released in the 1990s. The Supersize Upgrade promo offered customers the opportunity to stuff more calories into their body for an extremely low price, baiting customers into believing they were actually getting the most out of their money. And they were, but once you factor in the health effects of absurd portion sizes, you're actually paying for the size upgrade in lifestyle. Span. The supersize upgrade received significant attention following the release of the documentary film Super Size Me. The film tackles the challenge of eating McDonald's food for 30 days and explores the health effects of such a diet. The short answer? Nothing good. And while both the supersize upgrade and the value meal are seen as commercial successes, one value menu stands head and shoulders above them all. And this time, it wasn't a mouthful to say. Mc Dollar Menu McDonald's was, and still is, one of the biggest names in the fast food value game, and when they saw what competitors like Wendy's, Burger King, and Taco Bell were doing, they knew they had to remind them of their place. Say my name. McDonald's. You're goddamn right. The dollar menu was a concept similar to Wendy's Super Value Meal, except catchier. The menu included sundaes, drinks, fries, and the two most famous items on the menu, McDouble Cheeseburgers and the McChicken, all of which were sold for the low, low price of, you guessed it, a dollar. The idea was simple, attract customers into the restaurant by serving low-priced options, and then encourage these same customers to buy one of the higher-priced items along with their dollar treat. This approach predicted a sharp increase in sales and product turnover. McDonald's sales skyrocketed and people were coming in droves. Sadly, McDonald's put too much faith in its customers. The problem. The dollar menu was amazing. 
offering the most value per dollar spent out of all the other competitors in the value meal market. But maybe McDonald's made the menu a bit too amazing. Customers were buying from the dollar menu, that's for sure, but they rarely paired their dollar menu cravings with any of the regularly priced menu items. This meant that any customer could just come to a McDonald's and order hefty menu items for the low price of a dollar. After just a few weeks of the dollar menu, franchise owners and McDonald's itself began seeing the horrible cracks of their value meal. The dollar menu was supposed to operate at negative expense, treated more as a marketing technique meant to sell more Big Macs than an actual business move. At the time, it was estimated that each transaction that happened at McDonald's actually cost the branch three cents. Now, three cents may sound like chump change for a big company like McDonald's, but this small expense all adds up when you realize just how many people order from the dollar menu every day. Of course, McDonald's can take these small costs in stride. What's a thousand dollars to a multi-million dollar food mogul, right? But sadly, not all McDonald's branches are owned by the big guys. Hello, and welcome to the Los Pollos Hermanos family. Some of them are just small franchises that could definitely feel the hit of these costs. Things got so bad that franchise owners started going behind McDonald's back and completely changing the prices on the dollar menu, adding a few cents to pad the cost. It was clear that McDonald's was onto something, but they needed to go back to the drawing board ASAP and rethink their strategy. This is when McDonald's really started to cook. Return of the Mac After what seemed like an eternity of constant losses, McDonald's eventually gave up on the original dollar menu in favor of the dollar menu and more promotion. Not necessarily an end to the dollar menu concept, but something that's far beyond what it originally stood for. This menu featured items priced at $1, $2, or $3, providing more options for customers with varying budgets. This change was made to compensate for some of the problem items in the dollar menu, particularly customer favorites such as the double cheeseburger and the McChicken, both of which were given a significant price hike from $1 to $3, even reaching prices as high as $4. This change received significant backlash from diehard dollar menu fans. Dollar menu lovers all over America had gotten used to good burgers for cheap, and now they weren't willing to spend more. No, come back on $2! No, no. But McDonald's knew that the customers had to either take it or leave it, and the customer eventually did. To compensate for this change in prices, McDonald's introduced a second value meal promo in 2016, called the McPick 2. This promo allowed customers to choose two items from a selection of menu items for a fixed price for a total of $2. This promotion was a variation of the dollar menu and aimed to provide flexibility and value to customers. Only time will tell if the dollar menu gets phased out again in favor of a more profitable value meal. Let's just hope they don't add a $4 menu.